back everyone to another PS3 homebrew video and today we're looking at RetroArch version 1.9.0 we're going to install this on our PS3s that are running custom firmware and I'll be showing you what type of firmware I'm running you can use multi-man but for now I'm using this uh, mod installer which clearly shows what kind of uh, firmware I'm running uh, Multiman doesn't show me that information for some reason. So here I have 4.86 CEX firmware. So let's uh, get out of here real quick. And let's go to our desktop. Here's RetroArch version 1.9.0. And if you're not familiar with what RetroArch is, it's basically a multi system emulator. You can run a bunch of different ROMs from all across different generations of different consoles like Atari, Nintendo, uh, PS1, PSP, stuff like that and run it all in one application and it can run a bunch of different systems they just added uh, 44 cores and each core is uh, I guess a different emulator uh, for example we have uh, Game Boy Color we have two different cores so Game Bat and Gear Boy and you can play around with each core to see which one runs better for the uh, game you're trying to emulate. So down here are the links. It gets kind of confusing, but it shouldn't be too difficult to understand. So here is the official RetroArch version 1.9.0. And my firmware was CEX, so I'll be clicking on this link and downloading this version. You can also use the uh, Beta 04. I did test these two on the uh, firmware I'm running right now and it seems to work just fine. This one is running 66 plus cores, this repack, the unofficial beta updated this month. So that's really nice. The great thing about this application is that they're constantly updating it. And the last release was just yesterday. Well, I'm recording this on the 9th. So by the time you see this, it's going to be the 10th. So two days ago, they just had their last release for the PS3 version of RetroArch, which is really nice. And it's really good to see those updates coming uh, fairly quickly. And they do such a great job. Here is my downloaded package. And you want to plug in your USB stick. And I have a 64 gigabyte Cruiser Glide from SanDisk. And it's formatted to FAT32. So make sure it's formatted to FAT32 if this is your first time doing this. Let's plug it right in. And there is my USB drive. Very good. Let me resize this just like that. I have a folder called packages and this is where I'm going to dump that retroarch.pkg file. So let's throw that in there. And it will take some time because it's over 500 megabytes, so it shouldn't take too long. While you're getting this copied over, you can get your ROMs all set up. And I recommend using a larger size USB stick so you can just throw your ROMs on there. Uh, let's see here. This folder contains around uh, 5.55 gigabytes of games. And I have my Game Boy ROMs, my Game Boy Advance ROMs my Game Boy Color ROMs, uh, N64 ROMs, my PS1 ISOs, very good, and PSP ISO. Or I guess I just have one to test that. And my SNES collection of games that I love to play the most. So that's not too bad, five gigabytes and I have all those games. I recommend getting like a 64 gigabyte uh, to get started, but I would highly recommend getting like a 256 or 512 uh, to install all your games uh, my hard drive is pretty small and I don't plan on really updating it so I will just probably get an external hard drive or just have a much larger USB stick and it's just much easier to mess around like that so alright it's all copied over we are all set so make sure you have your ROMs in a specific folder so you can track it because once we're in RetroArch we do have to locate this folder and it's a lot easier if you have your games and ROMs in specific folders like this. That way you know exactly what they are and what kind of cores you're trying to run when selecting these ROMs. 
Also, I forgot to mention, make sure to copy the RetroArch in a folder called Packages. You just don't want to simply copy them over to the root of your USB drive. So make sure you create a new folder and name that Packages and copy those over into this folder and you will be all set. So let's go back to our PS3 and let's disconnect our USB stick and reconnect it to the PS3. And here we want to go to package manager, go to install package files and use the second option, which is package directory install from packages directory on your storage device. And there is the retroarch.pkg file. Press X and it will begin installing retroarch on your PS3. Very good. So we'll take some time. Boom and RetroArch is completed and there is RetroArch all ready to go so before we launch the application make sure you're connected to the internet because we're going to update a bunch of files within RetroArch so once you're connected start up the app all right welcome to RetroArch now the first thing we want to do is update RetroArch so let's go down to the online updater and here we want to update the assets. So we're going to be updating the assets, the controller profiles, uh, the databases, overlays, the CG shaders, and I believe that's it. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Next up, we are updating the controller profiles. Next up, we have update overlays. And finally, we have update CG shaders. All done here. Press the circle button to go back and restart RetroArch. We're fully restarted. Uh, next thing I like to do personally, this is just a personal preference. If you like the way uh, the main menu looks, you can just skip this part of the video. But I like the original uh, interface, the XMB interface, like the PS3. So I'll go down to settings, go to the drivers, and under menu, I'll change this to XMB. Press circle, press circle again, go to main menu and restart RetroArch. And this will change the whole entire interface into the original uh, PS3 XMB, just like that. And I also like to change the theme here. So under the second option, which is settings, go down to the user interface, go to appearance and all the way down here we can change let's see the icon shadow so the icons gives it a little bit of a, a shadow there and the menu icon theme so here we can change it into different themes by pressing the left or right on the d-pad so retro system is my favorite now I like to change the menu color too you can use the left and right you have some really nice colors the light ones kind of uh, of a pain. Sunbeam's cool. Pikachu yellow, cute purple, fam family red, flaming hot, ice cold. Dark purple is pretty cool. I like that one. Midnight blue as well. So I'll leave it in dark blue, or I'm sorry, dark purple. Let's move on to playing one of our games off of our USB stick. And the first thing I like to do is go under the input under settings. And I'm going to change the hotkeys. So hit the hotkeys option here. And the menu toggle gamepad combo. So here we have the controller button combination to toggle the menu. And this is a menu that's brought up during uh, the gameplay. And that way you can save your games and also just load up some different settings. Or if you want to try another core for that specific game that you're playing and also restart it quit it and that way you don't have to just hit the home button and then restart RetroArch because it does have its own little menu to do that to go back to this main menu here uh, for now we have the L3 and R3 to trigger that little menu so we're just gonna leave it like that and let's go to the main menu and let's load up some content so here we want to find our USB stick. Now for me, mine is under the dev underscore USB 001. 
And here are my ROMs. Here's my ROMs folder within my USB stick. And here are all of the folders I created. So let's go to Game Boy Advance and let's try one of my favorite Pokemon games and that is Pokemon Emerald. And it will begin to load the game and use the core associated for that console you're trying to play. And here we're using the VBA, it's a Nex or something like that. Let's toggle that to a little quick menu. And there we go. Here we can resume, restart, close content, take a screenshot, and save our states. You don't ever want to save the state within the game using the actual save state in the game because most of the time it won't work and I've been doing that for a while and I go back and I'm like, oh, where's my save states? They're not there. And so they don't really get saved. So make sure to use the quick menu and save your states there. And when you load up the game, you can just uh, toggle the little menu and load your states just like that. Very, very good. Let's close this content and head back to the main menu. One of the great things I love about RetroArch is that it will create these beautiful playlists when you scan a directory. It's very convenient because you don't have to always go back into that USB drive folder and everything will be placed accordingly on the main menu here, which is really nice. But if you scan the directory right now, your PS3 will freeze. So the problem that I'm having is if I go into scan directory and go to my USB drive, go to ROMs, and if I scan this directory, right now it's not showing no items. Uh, but if I use the scan directory option, it's going to show me how many items I have in there. It's going to begin the scan and then it's going to freeze. So we have to change a few settings here in order for this to work. Let's go under our settings and do that right now. Go to the user interface and enable show advanced settings. So hit that with the on, press the circle button, then go back in and we will have more options. And we want to find the one that says threaded tasks. So perform tasks on a separate thread. We want to disable this, turn that off. Go back to the main menu. Here we go. Go to, let's see here, configuration file. And we want to save our current configuration. There we go. And now we want to restart RetroArch. And we should be able to scan a directory and RetroArch will begin to create those beautiful playlists. So let's try that right now. I'll be going under my USB drive here. Go to ROMs. Let's just try one. I'm going to scan this directory. And it looks like it's working just fine. Perfect. And there is our beautiful playlist. There is the Game Boy playlist with all of our games. That is nice. Beautiful, right? Let's go back and scan another directory. Let's go down. Let's uh, let's see here. Let's do this one. Oh, froze there a little bit. Whoa, baby. I'm like, oh, I just fixed it. Don't don't do this to me now. <laughs> so it's scanning. It's going to do its thing. Just let it do its. Don't even look at it. <laughs> don't look at it. Let it do its thing. I've had a lot of trouble with this, so I had to had to go online and, and figure out what the issue was here with the whole scanning because it usually doesn't happen when I'm on my PS Vita. It just completely scans it and creates the beautiful playlists for me. Let's go down to our Game Boy Color and scan this directory. So, like I mentioned before, it says there's no items, but when it's scanning it, it sees 11 different games. And it's going through and, and figuring out where to place it in different playlists but they're all the same so they should all go into the uh, the same uh, folder let's go down to NES these are the ones that I really want to focus on for now in this video and this one's gonna take some time because this one has 35 games but in the meantime what we can do is just check out the playlist already and this is why I chose this theme because it gives us those beautiful icons look at that we have the original Game Boy Advance 
along with the original Game Boy Color and Game Boy, the original Game Boy. Uh, even the cartridges are different. You can see these are more square and gray as to the Game Boy Color. They're like the classic with the little bump uh, and they're translucent, so that's kind of cool. If you have a bunch of games under your playlist, what you can do is enter the game by pressing X and you can add these to your favorites. Let's go back here and your favorites, you'll see all the games that you have favorited. Very nice. And you can just press X, go through, select your core and start playing. Cause some of these playlists do get kind of crazy large. Like I, on my PS feed, I have like over 400 games in each playlist. I have like complete libraries of each of these retro consoles, which is very cool. So that is RetroArch on the PS3. There's so much to talk about when it comes to this amazing app, but I'll save those for other videos here on the channel. And one topic I wanted to talk about is like RetroArch achievements, where you can claim trophies by playing these retro games. So that's really, really cool. And just also like modifying settings and doing some other things like downloading different cores and what to do when you're coming across a so-and-so problem. Uh, this video would be really long if I covered everything, but I just wanted to get you guys started on RetroArch on the PS3 and get you up and running and playing your retro games. So that is it for this one, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, make sure to hit the thumbs up. It helps out with the whole algorithm here on the channel. And if you have any questions, comment down below. And if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss a video like this and many others coming very, very soon. Take care, guys. Stay safe. And I'll see you on the next one.